Welcome clients and guests to my channel. I'm Jason Cerro and I'm a licensed professional counselor. My videos are designed to educate and empower you to make informed decisions about your mental health. In this role play, I play the narcissistic mother that is more vulnerable based where she makes disapproving sounds and remarks, communicates in a passive aggressive way, makes herself sound like the victim, acts like the entitled mother, talks about being inconvenienced, brings the focus back on herself, blames her ex-spouse, and passive aggressively blames the daughter for her past problems with the daughter's father. I'll see this presentation often in therapy where the ex-wife just lays into the ex-husband and does everything she can to discredit, criticize, assassinate his character, and just trash the guy. It's a very toxic presentation that my clients, the children of these parents, are forced to be in the middle of the drama. So what I try to do is minimize and eliminate the exposure to these tirades so my clients can maintain a safe place in my office. It's not always 100%, but I try my best to get ahead of these situations. The daughter in this role play is trying to give the mother a heads up on a schedule change and justify it by using common sense and just trying to simply reason with her mom. The daughter also apologizes for seemingly causing such an issue and is trying to get her mom to be excited for her to no avail. Hey mom, I just wanted to call and let you know that John and I will be heading over first to dad's house to take pictures for the prom. It'll be dad, Stephanie, grandma, and even Aunt Angie will all be there. So after we're done taking pictures with them, John and I will head right over to your house. You told me that you were coming to my house first. Aunt Judy and I were expecting you at 3.30 and scheduled a nail appointment right after the photos. Now I have to see if I can move my nail appointment. You know, I just don't know if they can do that. You know, it must be so difficult to think of someone other than yourself. Mom, I didn't know you scheduled a nail appointment after the photos. And yeah, we were going to your house first until Stephanie suggested that we start at her and dad's house because your house is closer and, and on the way to the prom. And it, it wouldn't make driving sense to start at your house and, and backtrack to dad and Stephanie's house. It just makes sense because of where you both live. She had a good idea. I see how this is. You will take the advice of a lying, cheating homewrecker over the woman that gave birth to you and raised you. I suppose the abuse from your father is the gift that keeps on giving. Lucky me. Mom, what are you talking about? Why would we drive an hour out of the way just to take pictures with you first? Why does this matter so much to you? Oh, sweetie, it doesn't matter. I've never mattered to you or your father. You've always taken his side. Your father will always be first to you. You seem to conveniently forget all the times your father left me by myself to raise you and your brother while he went golfing, bar hopping, gallivanting, and doing who knows what. You two love to gang up on me. I guess we wouldn't be in this position if your father didn't cheat on me, but what do I really know? Mom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause such a problem. I didn't know it was going to turn into this. I just really, I want to move on from this. I'm really looking forward to the prom. John and I are so excited. This is so special to us. And I just want you to be happy for us. The senior prom is a special night. Let's just hope John's car can get you there because, oh my God, your father made me an hour late to my prom because he was so irresponsible and didn't do his car maintenance and we broke down. I was so embarrassed when the tow truck driver arrived and saw me crying my eyes out in my prom dress on the side of the road. Mom, I've got to go. I wanted to give you a sense as to how a healthy version of this situation would go down so you can have something more communication friendly to compare your situation to. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below because it definitely generates some interesting dialogue. Hey mom, I just wanted to call and let you know that John and I will be heading over first to dad's house to take pictures for the prom. Stephanie, Grandma, and Aunt Angie will all be there. So right after we're done taking pictures with them, John and I will head right over to your house. Oh, can I ask why the change of plans? 
Yeah, we were going to your house first until Stephanie suggested that we start at her and dad's house because your house is closer and on the way to the prom. And it wouldn't make driving sense to start at your house and backtrack to dad and Stephanie's house. It just makes sense because of where you both live. She had a good idea. Yeah, I did have plans with Aunt Judy to be here at 3.30 and then we had a nail appointment right after that, but that wouldn't be a problem to move it to, to another day. I'm certain Aunt Judy would have no problem doing that even though she keeps complaining about her nails. You know your aunt. As you know, Stephanie and I have not always seen eye to eye but I know she's been really supportive of you since she married your dad. And that's really all that I care about is her having your best interests at heart. And it does make sense to do it that way. I, I actually, I can't believe I didn't think of that myself. Are you sure? I feel bad for telling you this last- Honey, it's fine, really. I just want to make sure you and John have a great time. The senior prom is really a special event and the last thing you need to worry about is which parents house you're going to take pictures first at. Can you just text me a heads up when you're leaving dad's? Oh mom, thanks for being so understanding. I appreciate it. I love you so much. Oh, I love you too, sweetie. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. You can see in the healthy role play that the mother was respectful and actually asked a clarifying question without any innuendo. She then communicated what her original plans were with her sister and then was very accommodating and understanding of the change in plans after her daughter's rationale for the change in plans. She then made a lighthearted joke about her sister showing her ability to be light in the moment. The mother brought up an interesting fact about her ex-husband's wife in saying that they haven't always seen eye to eye, but made sure her main point to the daughter was that she supported her daughter's relationship with her stepmother despite their differences. This shows that you can be supportive of family members despite not having blissful interactions over the years. It also shows the daughter support in the sense that the daughter can have two mothers essentially and the biological mother is not immature or entitled or feeling threatened by another woman. The mother in this healthy scenario knows her position as mother is secure and she doesn't need to verbally dismantle the stepmother in order to maintain this status. So really what we're looking for in any conflict is if the parties involved are being reasonable and trying to work out a solution and not just engaging in a toxic unhelpfulness. So if you like this work, please hit the like button, share it, subscribe, and as always, be where you are and be resilient.